What's your name? Oh, we sort of skipped that formality, didn't we? Oh, darling. Does this blasted boat have to land? Oh, darling, we'll have just as much fun down here. Wait till you see New Orleans. Sure, I know. The boat docks, a southern belle meets her friends and admirers. And where am I, left high and dry on land? You think all southern girls are frivolous, don't you? You're the first southern girl I ever met. But whatever you are, I'm crazy about. Oh. Fresh? How we miss you. If you're lying to me, I'll have you put back in jail. Oh, monsieur, me, my grand man, tous les descendants rose forever. If these are the oysters of yesterday. Hmm. Hmm. Very good. Send the sack up to the house. Ah, oh, we oui, monsieur, merci. I wonder what Julie's brought back from Memphis this time. Well, for your sake, sir, I hope she's lost her taste for queer animals. Hmm. You can call me Julie. Julie. Come on, Angel. Ah, my oh. It's good to have you back, honey. The bag is up here. We sure have missed you. Papa. Julie, New Orleans has been a graveyard. Oh, Blackie, it's wicked to lie. I'm sure you've been flirting with every girl in town. Come, my dear. Supper will be ruined. Oh, wait. There's someone... Uh, Papa, may I present Mr... I'm sure you'll adore him. Oh, it's a great honor, Mr... Uh, uh, Reynolds. Reynolds. Someone you met on the boat? Oh, what an evil thought, Blackie. He's an old, old friend of uh, Aunt Bell's. We met at a reception there. Young man, is Mr. J. Reynolds aboard? Oh, I'm John Reynolds, ma'am. What are you doing with those people? Well, they're my friends. Let me introduce... Oh, don't bother. I had the honor of meeting Blanche Bruno 40 years ago. You might as well know now. That is the man you come 2,000 miles to chase out of this town. What's that? Who is this fellow? Old, old friend of Aunt Bell, sir. Don't play innocent Joe with me, Anatole Mirbo. You thought you'd get the better of me when you bribed lawyer Sanders to abandon me in the anti-lottery league, just as you bribed every lawyer in town. Well, Good. here's one you can't bribe. Not even if you've sent your pretty daughter to board the boat at Memphis to try and set his poor, silly, masculine heart aflutter no, look before here. he could learn who you all are. Well, that's not true. The woman's mad. He's still going to restore law and order to this benighted city by smashing you in your devil's lottery to smithereens. Oh. Don't pay any attention to her father. Why, Dick Toyota prunes and prisms don't tell me you didn't flutter your eyelids at him. My daughter didn't know this person, ma'am, and she never intends to make his acquaintance. Good day. This way is my carriage. Here we are, get your food, Mardi Gras tonight. Blues, blues. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all come right over here for your mask for Mardi Gras tonight. Ring bells on Mardi Gras night, stiff right up, bells right here. Come, come, come get some good deeds. Good cookies and cakes for Mardi Gras night. I tell you, young man, this town is a sink of iniquity. Seems rather gay to me. Why, ah, like a painted woman. Brilliant on the outside, but thoroughly rotten underneath. Sink of iniquity. Flowing in all directions. Here, fix that. Flowing in all directions, but from one source. The lottery, run by your friends, the Mirbos. 
You don't want to believe me. Well, I'm hardly in a position to judge. Read that. A report on the state of the river levees compiled by myself. Thank you. Well, I bet... Read that. An account of the deplorable condition of the public works, hospitals, etc., compiled by myself. Thank you. Well, I was Read to that. Say... An eyewitness account on the gambling halls and the dens of evil compiled by my... Uh, Mr. Bingley S. Jones. It's a den of evil that must be destroyed, though my fortune and life are consumed in the struggle. It's wickeder than Sodom and Gomorrah. It's... Agamemnon. Yes, ma'am. Haven't I taught you how to answer a telephone? Yes, ma'am. Well, answer it. Where was I? At Sodom and Gomorrah. Hello. May I speak to you? That devil machine it done. Speak back to me. Oh. <laughs> Agamemnon. Oh, my goodness. Hello? She's not wasting much time. For me? Mm -hmm. Hello? Thank goodness. I was afraid they'd locked you away somewhere. Oh, it's an awful mess. The pa's raging. Yeah. My chaperone doesn't like the situation either. Are you lonesome for me, honey darling? What? Are you lonesome for me, honey darling? I can't hear you. Are you lonesome for me, honey darling? Julie? Can you hear me? I'm coming right over. Oh, no, wait. Hold on a minute. You dasn't come here, not until I can get around the path. But I could meet you. Listen. There's a little pastry shop in the Vieux Carré, Gaston's, right in back of the cathedral. Wait outside around 10 o'clock. Au revoir, my love. Why fooling around with an outsider, honey, when you got so many of your own folks crazy about you? You're not fixing to tell on me, are you, Blackie? I know the quickest way to make you want something's always been to tell you you can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to your flirting way, sugar. You've been at them since you wore pigtails. I wonder what you'd say if I told you it was serious this time. Hmm? I wonder. You find the lady more easier. Thank you. How did you know I was waiting for a lady? Monsieur, when a man waits for his sweetheart, the whole world knows. <laughs> Hello, Mademoiselle. Hello, Mademoiselle. Quelque chose? Un petit ami, peut-être, eh? Is she say, Monsieur is perhaps looking for a pretty girl? Tell her no. Oh, qu'il en bête. Un cochon. <laughs> she say you are not very polite. Well, I don't go in for that sort of thing. Uh-huh. What sort of thing? Picking up girls. Well, perhaps if we met on the steamboat, eh? What? <laughs> Have you missed me? Missed you. I can't work, can't think, can't even read a report. 
But what there on the page, you're smiling. Yeah. <laughs> a wicked smile? Wicked enough to lure me away from a lot of things I should be doing. <laughs> Coffee. Such as reforming the world. Well, according to Mrs. Oh, Bruno. I know people say this is a wicked city, but they're so wrong. Why, New Orleans is the nearest thing to Paris in America. We're civilized. We know how to live and have fun. Oh, darling, this is no way to spend carnival night. Is this a better way? Much better. <laughs> I'm just afraid I'll wake up and find out it's a cold morning in New England. Oh, it's New Orleans, darling. <laughs> and get it over with. Oh, no, please. Well, we can't go around playing Romeo and Juliet all our lives. Darling, you must give me time to bring him around. Come to the house tomorrow morning. Oh, Papa, I was just coming to find you. You stay right here with Blackie. Where is that young man? Let me go, Julie. Papa. Oh, she's fainted. Here, she's fainted. Move off. Don't stand there gaping. My advantage this time, sugar. 
take us to the carriage. You want to treat me French, oh, oh, no, no, honey? No, no. Come on, let's go to French town. No, no, no. Oh. Go home and make plans. That's Gaston. Oh, Big no. Plans. Oh, what's the hurry, Frenchie? Everybody oh, wait sure. home. Come on. You want to come with us, Come on. Come on. Now, look, you're going to be just as safe as if you don't mother's arm. <laughs> <laughs> Making a night of it, Mr. Reformer? Perhaps you'd like an experienced guide. No, thanks. But I'm sure you'd qualify if I needed one. I'm going to have Tiana. Oh, I am. No, I am. I am. Monsieur, where is he? Well, uh, he just left in a carriage uh, with some friends, I guess. Some friends? Where? They went off in that direction. French town. Somebody's tall and handsome. Somebody's brave and true. Somebody's hair is a very fair. Somebody's eyes are blue. Somebody came a courting, wanted to marry me. Somebody begged me to say I do, but I just said, I see. Somebody made a promise of love till eternity. Then somebody he got wed, you see. To somebody else, not me. Somebody came a A couple of hours ago, what was I? A poor me. bicycle mechanic with a lottery somebody ticket in his shoe. Now I'm treating everybody to champagne. <laughs> somebody oh, made a promise of love right? till eternity. Then somebody he got away, you see. Place your bet, please. Okay, Frenchy, my nose told me number 32. <laughs> please, you let me go home now, all right? No. Please. What's the use of weakening Frenchy? Life's so short. Yeah. Spend it fast, Frenchy. Spend it fast. Rien va plus. chapeau of me. Thank you very much. Blackie. You're looking prettier every day, Pearl. Your place, too. You got it fixed up real nice. Yes, it is quite attractive, if I do say so myself. Of course, things are a little slow right now. Not too, quite uh, up uh, to uh, expectations. Uh, 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 such a pretty little fibber, too. Pearl, you and I are going to have a little business talk. Oh, Blackie. You talk awful sweet, but always in the back of your mind is business, business, business. Show me my fears for Hello, sugar. You're looking lost tonight. Come pretty down here, don't they? How much money did you win tonight, honey? Did you hit the jackpot? No, but the fellow I'm looking for did. He's a shortish man. Came with quite a party. Oh, why bother looking for him? Three's a crowd. Got enough money to buy me a drink? I might. If I find this fella, his name is Gaston. Names is one thing they don't mention, brother. All right, sister. Buy yourself a drink anyway. Hurry down the line and tell the bunch to lie low. That bird's from the Anti-Lottery League.
big bucks. I, 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 I'll see you later, guys. Now, would I ask for only $500 if I didn't love you? Oh, Blackie. Yes. There are moments when I simply cannot understand why I'm so crazy about you. Now, look. You haven't had any trouble down here lately, have you? No. Well, you know, protection comes high nowadays, what with all of these reformers running around and... Well... Speaking of the devil... Well, not the real thing, just a nosy attorney, that's all. Still, they make pretty good targets, too. Not for my pace. I run things refined here. Well, imagine seeing you here, Mr. Reformer. Bill field trip. I'm looking for someone. Yes. Aren't we all? Well, boys will be boys. Mum's the word. Gaston, come on, wake up. Fun's fun, but your wife's waiting. Last night, young lady. How many biscuits shall I fix you, Lammy? I buttered my own biscuits for 50 years. You're not fooling me, daughter. <laughs> <laughs> no getting around me either. Now then, tell me about last night. Oh, how do you like the strawberries, darling? I sat to the market for them this morning. Oh, dress the strawberries. I want to know what you were doing with that carpet beggar. Oh, you mean last night? What? Don't you like Mr. Reynolds, Papa? Julie, I will not be wheedle deedled out of my parental authority. I demand an explanation. Oh, if you only knew John better, you'd simply adore him. Oh, I wouldn't like that Boston codfish if he was served on caviar with truffles. <coughs> oh, Papa, I wish you didn't feel that way about him because I'm going to marry him. Oh. Yo. Oh, Papa, Yo. please. I'm not just trying to get around you. I love him. I've never been so serious about anyone in my whole life. I won't listen. I forbid it. I... I have to elope with him. I'll ruin him. I'll have him run out of town. Papa, please. He's not against us anymore. Oh. Honest, he's changed his mind about the lottery. What? You see, I'm really helping you to smash that silly old woman's scheme to ruin you. Hmm. Just you wait. The whole town will be laughing when they hear how her smart new lawyer's gone over to our side. Is this true, Julie? Not a trick, mind you. Why, Papa, don't you trust me? Frankly, I don't. Because I'm so much like my clever Papa? <laughs> oh, I wish I'd never played a trick or told a fib in my whole life. And then you'd know how serious this is to me. Mm -hmm. So he's given up old Blanche Bruno for you, eh? <sighs> Well, at least he's got good taste. Excuse me, sir. Gentlemen, see your name of Reynolds. Now, please, Papa. I'll see him. Oh, you are the sweetest Papa girl ever had. I must tidy up. <coughs> Felice! Sugar, where are you? What are you so sad about? He's here. Papa's going to see him. Oh, I fixed everything. 
You'll take breakfast? No, thank you. To tell you the truth, General Mirabeau, I came to tell yes, you... Yes, my boy, I know what you came to tell me. Fresh coffee for Mr. Reynolds. Another omelet. More steak. Well, I've had breakfast, thank you. Uh, what I wanted to say was... Uh, you've never had a proper breakfast, young man, till you've tasted this shrimp omelet. Our own river shrimp. <laughs> loves me, loves me not. He loves me. Oh, Felice. The boy just naturally loves us, Miss Julie. Oh, I'm so excited. Here, help me put this on. Oh, Felice, I've never been so crazy happy in my whole life. You telling me? Oh. Good thing I went to the conjure man last night, Landy. He fixed me the bestest conjure for to keep my man. Think I'll get him to fix one for you, too, huh? Oh, Felice. <laughs> Just the same, I ain't taking no chances. Mm. I snatched three hair right off that white man's head. That'll fix it, show. Hmm. I don't need any conjures. This is real for both of us. My daughter tells me you decided to give up this anti-lottery league business. I'm afraid your daughter has the wrong idea. What? We're investigating the murder that was committed last night, and we may have to prosecute the lottery if we find that there's any connection. To prosecute? Murder? Why, you young... Nevertheless, a man was murdered last night for the prize money he won in the lottery. Well, what's that got to do with us? You expect us to provide nurses to see the winners safely home? Let's stop beating around the bush. You know as well as I do who's responsible for these crimes. Young man, do you realize that you're accusing me of... You're the head of the lottery, General, and since the lottery is behind most of the organized crime in this city... Why, that's ridiculous. I won't have you saying such things. Go back to your room at once. This is no talk for a lady to hear. But it's my whole life, Papa. I won't be set upstairs like a child. John, I don't understand. You've certainly changed your tone since last night. I've seen and heard a lot since last night. But what? Nothing but what our enemies say. Do you know what's really in back of the lottery? The Mirabeau Hospital, the Widows and Orphans Fund. The levies, the very foundations of this city, if you please. Without us, New Orleans would be underwater. Oh, John, honey, if you'd only have faith in us instead of our enemies, there wouldn't be any of this trouble between us. I don't want any trouble between us. And I have faith in you, Julie. Thin is my boy. And I don't want to stand in the way of Julie's happiness either. Oh, Papa, you're a darling. For my part, I ask no more apology than that he quits this investigation. Well, I haven't said anything about quitting. If you refuse, you're putting my daughter in a very difficult position. John, you do love me. You're going to give up all this silly business. It would be strange to be prosecuted like a common criminal by one's future son-in-law. Is it that you're afraid to face an investigation? Oh. What an awful thing to say. Oh, come, come, Julie. Let's be patient. After all, if this young man means so much to you... Well, I won't let him stand here and insult you. I came here to do a job, Julie. I'm doing it. Papa, I'm sorry I asked you to see him. I apologize. This is the way, ladies and gentlemen, signatures, signatures, and still more signatures to our petition. We have made a start. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. But if we are to convince the mayor that he must appoint John Reynolds as special city prosecutor, then we must snow him under yes. with signatures, signatures, and still more signatures. <laughs> Oh, those things, yes. I got one this morning. Very bad likeness. But it must be stopped, sir. Call the mayor, yes, sir. Use your influence. I have the mayor on the telephone now, General. Uh, that's good, good. good. Now, now yes. tell, tell him it can't be done, sir. We've got to stop to this now. Hello, Sam. I understand that several of our public-spirited citizens have petitioned you to appoint this Mr. Reynolds a special city attorney. Uh, well, I just want you to know that his appointment has our wholehearted support. Great heaven. Fine, thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
But, General, sir, this will ruin us, sir. Completely. Gentlemen, gentlemen, good politics often demands that we do the unexpected. Let the reformers think they're getting one civic office, and they'll be quiet for a while. Well, it sounds dangerous to me. What are you afraid of? We always control the office, no matter who holds the job. Very clever, sir, but uh, practical? Diplomacy is the art of giving your enemy the victory and keeping the power for yourself. So my advice to you all, as friends and business associates, is to support Mr. Reynolds. And I will excuse me. There's something wrong about this. I can't understand. You ought to be able to. We don't know what it is and let us know with you. Quite a lesson in diplomacy, sir. In our game, Blackie, diplomacy gets you a lot farther than the tactics you and your friends have been using lately. But everything I've done, sir, has all been for the good of the business. I know, my boy. You boosted lottery earnings sky high. Join me? Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> yes, you dog. You've been a godsend to me. I love your recklessness, your dash, your good humor. I hate blue noses. <laughs> you cheered these old bones till I felt years younger. <laughs> How I'm going to get along without you, I don't know. But I don't think I quite understand, sir. On guard. Reformers have their place, Blackie. They sometimes call attention to things you've overlooked. Thanks to Mr. Reynolds, I've been watching you lately, Becky. You've been taking protection money from places in Frenchtown. More than that, you've been getting a kickback on monies that should have gone into our charities, the Miserable Hospital, the levies. But look here, sir. Oh, I'm not pretending to run a Sunday school. I do everything necessary to maintain our power, pay all necessary amounts. But I've always used that power honestly, according to my own lights. Blackie, you're through. Well, I guess I've had this coming to me for a long time, sir. That's the spirit. You know, your father was at my side through the hottest fights in the whole war. And you was just such a lovable blackguard as yourself. <laughs> My greatest trouble, sir, will be in finding an employer as congenial as yourself. And mine will be to find another lieutenant as gallant as Blackburn Williams, Esquire. Take all the time you like to find yourself another job. And we let it appear that you've simply made a voluntary change. Now get out. <laughs> Get out! For inside. You know, you could put your head to better use in this. How'd you like to join the Reform League? Me? <laughs> Say, boss, my head hurts bad enough already. You'd make a swell reformer. Young fool back again, kneeling at your feet. I never want to see him again as long as I live. Well, if 
you happen to change your mind, honey, it wouldn't hurt any to have a reformer in the family. Give the lottery a respectable trimming. See what they think of us. Who? Just a few old crackpots and meddlers. Well, maybe it's not the most respectable business for the father of a young lady. Now, don't let me hear you say a word against my father. He's the grandest man in the whole world. <laughs> sure you don't want that lawyer boy back again? Look at child. You're all I care about, really. And if I can't make you happy... And you're all I care about, too. Honestly. <laughs> staunch associate and a dear friend. With him has passed away an irreplaceable portion of the chivalry and tradition of our beloved South. But, gentlemen, <coughs> it has passed away. And now some of us are going to have to change some of our ideas. That is, uh, those of us who wish to remain with us. By what right? He doesn't control the lottery. Who gave him a part? I don't a question, know. Mr. Williams. By what right do you assume the general seat? Well, I'm happy to answer your question, sir. As you all know, the control and interest is held in the hands of the Mirbeau estate. As I'm expecting to be in control of the estate... Oh, well, don't congratulate me now, gentlemen. Her bereavement, you know. It uh, wouldn't be proper for me to talk to Miss Julie right now about her future happiness. Oh, no, Felice. You better eat something, Miss Julie. You'll be sick if it goes on this way. I'm all right, Felice. Really, I'm all right. Gentlemen, to see Mademoiselle Julie. Well? Mr. Reynolds, say maybe you should change your mind and see him this time, ma'am. Listen to me, Louis Napoleon. If that person attempts to enter this house again, I want him thrown out bodily. Do you hear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, what's the matter, Louie? You sound like a sick cat. Louie? I'll be right outside if you need help, mademoiselle. Get out of here. I don't want to see you. Get out of here. Go on. Get out. Get out! <laughs> I know you're upset, but I've just got to talk to you. I won't listen. You've got to get out of the lottery. We're going to crack down on it and break it wide open. You mustn't be involved. The lottery you. again. If you're so concerned about me, why don't you find the murder of my father? I'm doing everything I can. You don't want to find him. All you want to do is to cover up the guilt of your blue-nosed reformers. You ought to blame. You killed him. You might as well have fired the shot yourself. Louis! Police! Go ahead with your campaign, Mr. Reynolds. The lottery welcomes it. We're ready for you. Here to 
before, certain very valuable properties have brought us no more than rent. Now, under my direction, we're running these businesses. What did he say? The French town property. French town? Well, the general was against it. But what will people say? What will people know? You can depend upon my discretion, gentlemen. No. It's a matter of principle. But think of the profits. No. How much profit? Well, before we go into figures, gentlemen, I propose that we initiate the new policy by appointing as our sales manager a gentleman already well known to the sporting element of this city, Mr. Cuffy Brown. Cuffy Brown? The bruiser? Boy, bring me a pen wiper. Ladies don't go into gentlemen's places of business. This is my place of business now, Felice. Mm -mm. You're the most scandalizing female in the whole of New Orleans. Must be the devil done got into missing. It's a blessing our poor pa ain't here to see it. Good morning, Blackie. Good morning, gentlemen. Good, Good morning, Miss Julie. Julie. Won't you sit down? Is it all right if I sit here? Why, yes. I confess I've been feeling a little bit nervous over how you'd receive your new colleague. Julie, you don't want to be seen in a business office. But why? It isn't done. You are lady, Miss Julie. Yes, yes, you can't do it. Julie, what's come over you? Oh, come now, Blackie. I don't want to rob you of your power. Oh, of course not. But what do you want? to fight the people who killed my father. They're starting their campaign against us. Oh, Reynolds. Gentlemen, I said the general's loss was irreplaceable. I was wrong. The Louisiana lottery can now become greater than ever before. We have another Mirbeau with us, who will not only lend us her name, but her charm, her beauty, her uh, social influence. The gang's here. Oh, uh, yes, uh, the uh, the new sales force. If you'll excuse me. Of course. There'll be plenty to do. I have a lot to learn about this business. She's the boss now, huh? Well, I might as well go tell the gang the new policy stuff's out. No, we're going ahead. I handled her father, and he was an experienced businessman. Until he found out. Well, I'll see to it that she doesn't find out. And if she does, she will look just as guilty in the eyes of the law as any of the rest of us. No, no, go away. I hate the lottery. Huh? <gasps> well, <laughs> you don't like the lottery, eh? Oh, all right, all right. Now you're smart. Oh, be reasonable, lady. Just 30 tickets. You wouldn't want me to start using bad language in front of all these, uh, ladies, would you? How many... how many do I want? I will cut you to ribbons. I will dismember you. Just for that, we're going to raise your ante to 50 ducats. I don't pay tribute. Hey, mister, you can't treat me like I was a salesman selling brushes. I've been using tact. But I can use persuasion, too. Well, don't wait until I crack your head open with this spigot. You'll buy tickets. A ticket a day keeps bricks away. Play this on your gramophone. We've asked you ladies and gentlemen to come here to help us by identifying these men. Mr. Gaucher? Yes, sir. Blackie, 
Jackie, what's happening? They told me well, at the Aunt office. Bill's that... young friend is just trying to annoy us again. That's all now, darling. Now you go on back to the office, and I'll join you there later. No, I'd rather stay and listen. Now, sir, which of these men can you identify? Why, there, there must be some mistake. I, I never saw any of these men before. What about you? I sell corsets. Men never come into my shop except in emergencies. <laughs> Such inexperience. <laughs> The poor fella can't even frame a case properly. Madam Gaston, you must want to help us fight these forces that have caused you so much grief and sorrow. I have enough troubles, monsieur. I never see nobody. But I'm trying to protect you, you and citizens like you. But if you won't testify against these gentlemen, I can't prosecute. How about you? I'm just a businessman. I don't want to get mixed up in nothing. I see. Rather settle for a big block of tickets. How many did they make you buy? None. Anyway, that's my business. That's all. Madam Gaston, do you mind waiting? Well, is the party over, Mr. Attorney? No, it hasn't begun yet. But when it does, you'll be among the honored guests. Hmm, sounds very exciting, Mr. Reynolds. I can hardly wait. It's a shame, Mr. Reynolds. So many weeks of hard work and nothing but failure. What did I tell you? This town's a den of iniquity. It's a sink of evil. It's... Sodom and Gomorrah, and you love it. How can you say such a thing when I've given my time, my fortune, even my reputation to clean up New Orleans? When you get it cleaned up, you'll have nothing left to do but fancy work. You know what I really think? There's a woman behind it all, and you know who it is. That's right. They're coupling my name with yours in every bar in town. Oh, how can you say such a thing? It's because you're afraid to face the real cause of your failure. That's right. I failed. I failed because the people in this town who could help me, the people who have been hurt and victimized by these forces, won't lift a finger to stop them. The worst part of it is the lottery gang knows that I've failed. Now they'll be worse than ever. They'll go ahead, full steam, riding roughshod over everyone, intimidating, extorting, yes, even killing. Those bad men, Mr. Reynold, they make me afraid to tell the truth. But they've gone now, Mrs. Gaston. But I'm afraid they find out and, and they come to the shop and the children. But we'll give you full protection. You'll have a police guard night and day. Then I will tell you. This one, he is the one who spoiled my pastries. Get this down. Yes. And this one, he is the one who broke the window of the talking machine man. So oh. that was it. They scared the petticoats off of you. We, oui, but I am putting back on the petticoats, if you will help us now. Help you, lady? I'll fight this whole town for you, and everyone in it. Everyone. And all you have to do is tell the judge exactly what happened, and don't be afraid. And I'll see that you're protected. But, monsieur... Don't worry, you'll have an escort. I'm afraid. Quit worrying. I'll tell the truth. I'll swear to the bones of my sainted ancestors. I'll swear I'll... I'll... Looks like that protection is going to be a little late. Better get over to Madame Gaston's.
you were hurt. Bloody but unbowed. Thanks, Agamemnon. Back to bed, Agamemnon. I'll take care of Mr. Reynolds. Oh, well, it's, it's nothing, really. Just a little... Sit down. Stuff. Nonsense. During the war, I dressed the wounds of many a poor lad who died under my very hands. Well, if you'll let me live until tomorrow morning, I promise you the thrill of your life. Ah! Hey! Florence Nightingale. Uh, a hero must stand pain. Come in! Oh. Sorry to made you come clear out here, but I'm afraid there was a sort of a recession committee waiting at my place. Do you bring the subpoenas? Here they are. Every director of the lottery board, sir. Now we'll end their lottery devilment. Now we'll take the charter away from them, prove they're thieves and murderers, send them to rot in jail. Oh. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, let's get going. And in view of the testimony of these witnesses, I petition this honorable court for an order adjudging the owners and directors of said lottery to be operating in violation of their charter. And directing the Secretary of State to revoke same. Good. Judge Wilson, have I the right to defend my property? Miss Julie, let me handle this, please. This is very irregular, Your Honor. Since you asked for an informal hearing, Mr. Reynolds, I see no reason why Miss Merbo shouldn't answer the accusation herself. Thank you. Your Honor, last week in Mr. Reynolds' office, these same witnesses couldn't identify anyone or give any reason for being attacked. I'd like to know why they tell a different story here today. Even if it's true, if these people were forced to buy lottery tickets, is there any proof that our organization has anything to do with it? Your Honor, you've heard testimony of physical and mental suffering caused by this vicious ticket-selling campaign. We... Suffering? How many people would suffer if a business like ours were shut down? Irrelevant, Your Honor. Would it be irrelevant, Your Honor, if we were to pay damages? Not that we consider ourselves responsible, of course, but we'd like to show our goodwill. I'm afraid that wouldn't alter the situation, Miss Julie. Article 66 provides... Judge Wilson, you were my father's friend. You know how generous the lottery's always been in its charities. If you'd be so kind as to figure out the extent of each person's damage, I think this will cover it to suit everybody. Of course, I leave the distribution of the monies entirely with you. <clears throat> well... There is Article 66A, which in effect negates Article 66. Judge Wilson, may I remind you that I've made petition for a court order? Miss Julie, you have made a most magnanimous gesture. And, uh, <clears throat> most, and uh, quite in keeping with my policy of avoiding unnecessary expense and trouble to our citizens. For that reason, Mr. Reynolds, your petition is refused. This is an outrage! I trust we shall not have to fine anyone for contempt of court. This can't go on forever! Providence will have its revenge! Rome burned, Greece fell, and don't forget what Mrs. O'Leary's cow did to Chicago! <laughs> We're going to clean out every crooked place in this city. See this map? By beginning here and working in that direction, we can clean out everything this side of Canal Street. Very valuable information, Mr. Tippett. Very valuable. Another complaint from the DA's office. Where is it this time? Uh, I don't know. I didn't ask him the exact address. It's just one more of his frame-ups, that's all. I think I can handle this. Everything all right? Perfect. <laughs> Mr. Senator? Oh. 
I can see you're a real connoisseur, oh. Judge. <laughs> you know, Papa, left cases and cases of this. Do let me send you some. Oh, I couldn't think of it. I insist. Oh, well, what? You know, Judge, you're so clever about business and things. There's a little matter I wish you'd help me with. Why, I'd be glad to, Miss Julie. Oh. You know, my head just won't work about me. You're very welcome socially, boys, but no raid. I have an injunction. <laughs> but, Your Honor, in this sec... Case dismissed. Here's another reason for exposing the Mirabeau estates, Mr. Mayor. While the Mississippi River is rising, they're neglecting public safety. Now, isn't this more fun than running around the levees, Mr. Mayor? <laughs> when I say I won't, I'm gonna get those records. And I say you're beaten, finished. You were beaten the day you met that flippity-jibbit daughter of... My personal life has nothing to do with the Anti-Lottery League. Yeah, why didn't you think of that before? Well, if I could get some help out of your leading citizens, they don't seem to want me to expose the lottery. Our leading citizens, the only way this town can get the better of that group is the way my grandmother held her land against the Red Indians. There's only one way to fight crooks. I've got to get those records. Wait, John. <sighs> Look, this may be dangerous. It's no business for a lady. My grandmother was no lady. She defended her home by scalping Indians. When do we start? <laughs> If you could have seen him, Miss Julie, thinking he had us in his pocket, <laughs> especially when Farrington uh, airing his Latin. What was it, Farrington? Mensane and something. <laughs> I wish I could have seen his face when they all walked out on him. <laughs> Serve more wine, Cato. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> What's the matter, darling? You should be laughing with us, celebrating our victory. I am happy, Blackie. You've been wonderful. And I appreciate all the things you've done to make it easy for me. It's been a pleasure, Julie. Oh, he was bothering your pretty head about all the details of the business. The thing that's been hard for me is being patient. Waiting for you to get over the shock of your father's death and and other things. Are you fixing to propose to me, Blackie? Well, Julie, is there any reason why you and I shouldn't be married? No, but... Gentlemen, gentlemen, I give you a toast to the loveliest lady in New Orleans. The future Mrs. Blackburn Williams. Well, we're off. You know where. Shall we expect you? You boys go on ahead. I'll try and join you later. All right, All right. <laughs> Some of our friends insist on celebrating our engagement. Is that permitted? Of course, silly. Good night, darling. All right, Louis. But say, we go out with the girlies, too. Hmm? No, we stay on the job. That's right, stay on the job. That's how I got where I am today. What's 
that. Yeah. So how'd you get in here? <laughs> Ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. Aren't you glad to see me? You're the answer to a night watchman's phone. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> What's your name, girl? Oh. Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> now stop it! <laughs> but you don't know where they keep the key to the safe. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? Yes. <laughs> Give us your kiss, honey bunch. Oh, 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 this is revolting. We gotta hurry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, sugar pie, mm. I don't believe you know where it is. Mm, I know, all right, but you ain't getting it off of me. Stop it on him. Oh, get it. Yeah, all right. Must have done it. Uh, say, mister, hold up. I've got to find Blackie at once. I'll, I'll take a message for you. No, no, I'll go myself. Where is he? You couldn't go there by yourself. Don't be a fool, Louie. Get the carriage out. Quick. You wonder that I was stumped down the line? They're all in it. You know, I could have horse with them all personally. Come in. Oh. You got enough men for the raid, Captain? I don't think I can conduct this raid without authority from the Commissioner, Mr. Reynolds. You have my authority. Yes. The authority delegated to me by the citizens and mayor of this community. Well, I'd rather get in touch with the commissioner first. Where is he? At the, uh, uh, Parisian Palace. Well, then you'll get in touch with him, Captain. Because that's our first stop. Let's go. Come on, boys. Let's go. And it's no place for a little girl. Oh. Sugar pie. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and private files from the office. What? Coffee just told me. Hi, 
How do they open up in there? Oh, great Scott, I can't be found here. Not I. What will my wife say? We must keep them out. All right, come on, open up. Great Scott, I thought you said this was a safe place. Do you realize what this means to me? To be, to be found in a place like this? All right, come on, open up. We're taking you down to the city jail, along with your lady friends. You can finish your party down there. Quiet, quiet. You're making a big mistake, Reynolds. I've got Judge Wilson here with an injunction. Well, glad to hear you're in the party, Judge. There's some interesting financial memos on you in the private file. We got enough evidence to send you all to jail. What have I been paying you protection money all this time for? Shut your mouth. Why should I? Because of her? What she? No better than the rest of us. She's been getting her share, ain't she? There isn't going to be any murder protecting this place. This place is where you've been getting your money. Why didn't you do away with her when you got rid of her? What does she mean? I'll tell you later. Come on now. Shut the doors. Fire the windows. Get what did she mean? Nothing. And this is no time for us to quarrel. You and I have got to stick together. Who? You and I and that woman and all the crooks and gamblers in town? Your business partners, Miss Mirbeau. Well, we can't get out this way. So this is what I've been protecting. Yes. This and other enterprises just as profitable. You chip off the old block, aren't you? you? Want everything all on your own terms. All of the profits and none of the dirty work. You've tricked me into this. You've made a fool out of me in front of everybody in New Orleans. You've lied to me about all the... You've been lying to yourself, Julie. And using me and the lottery and all your wealth and power just to fight John Reynolds. That isn't true. <laughs> Still lying to yourself. Still afraid to admit that you love him. Well, I missed my chance again. I should have done it last year. It saved us both an awful lot of trouble. Julie, I know what you're thinking. I know exactly what you're thinking. Of course, no one else will ever know. Quite a family party. Bring him along, boys. Judge William Herring presiding. Be seated. Is the counsel for the prosecution ready? Any further unseemly demonstration, and I will clear the court. Are you ready, Mr. Reynolds? Your Honor. And gentlemen of the jury. Be seated again. Let's have order in the court. Today, as New Orleans faces a possible watery disaster, 
The people finally have a case against the authors of their misfortune. Yeah, these I did not intend to take up the time of this court by raking in the muck of vice and corruption of the people involved. Instead, I will confine myself to the cold, dry facts, the evidence of the written words. I wish to offer as Exhibit A a certain list of payments with specified dates and amounts made by Blackburn Williams to the other defendants now on trial. Continue, Mr. Reynolds. You were about to submit Exhibit A. Seems I have no evidence to submit. This is a lie! How am I? This will go! Is this court to understand that the prosecution is unable to proceed for lack of evidence? Yes, Your Honor. I have evidence, Your Honor. I'd like to be put on the witness stand. Swear in the witness. I solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Take the chair. I know that some people don't expect the truth from me, but this is the truth. Since last night, I found out so many things. I... Your Honor, I've discovered that our lottery and its charities have been twisted and used to cover up the foul as most despicable things anyone could...
Captain, you must do something. What can I do? Take your boat in and plug up the gap. You're crazy. Out of the way. Not so fast, mister. Cash talks. I got the price. Hundred bucks even. Let's call it 500. I like to travel first class. I'm glad to have quality folks aboard. Just one thing, Captain. I'm in a hurry. Well, as soon as we satisfy all the folks that are still trying to get aboard. All right, who's... Well, again, I don't like boats that are crowded. Look, mister, for 500 you bought one passage, not the ship. I'm still in command. Certainly. With my help. Cast off! No more passengers. All ashore! I'm going straight ahead, Captain. with this old tub. What is this? Every five minutes, somebody else is telling me what to do. We can block that breach with the ship. Not my ship. This thing's loaded, mister. Harvest over. There's another thing. Every five minutes, somebody else is sticking a gun in my ribs. Oh, this is John Reynolds. 